but that's what it would take for me to be happy. Anyone else? Come on, Edna. Bob, I haven't talked to you for a while. I'll say something real quick. Yes, sir. I'm Dave Slummer, I own Slummer Wholesale. And I, too, walked around the square. Darrell, I don't know where you got 31 people. I, maybe you did, but uh, I called you a couple times and we communicated. But uh, I walked around the square, and I found exactly what Herb said. A lot of people said to me, you know, I'm not going to fight City Hall. And to address what Brian, the commission, says, I've known Brian Robinson since he was out tall. There's not a fine person in this county that Brian and, and all the people in the commission. I know they want to do what's right. We all want to. I've been up downtown since 1981. I've got 14 employees. And we're looking at either expanding and having to move off the square. And I've talked to two realtors who have told me that this will hurt my resale value. Now, these are people that are in the real estate business. They're not people that are speculating. These are people that sell real estate and told me that. And in my situation, Helen, you answered her question about, you know, you can, but we don't know. I was told by an architect we wanted to do some things that we would like to take the front of our building and block it up for security reasons and for uh, energy and then paint the front and put some front windows on. Now, am I going to be able to do that? You have to see the design. Well, I don't have time for that. I'm in business. I've got 14 employees, and I don't need you guys or anybody else telling me how to do business. George Bush told me don't do taxes, and that was a lie. So stay out of our business. We pay property taxes, and let us run our business. That's all I have to say. I don't go and tell you guys how to do your thing. No, I'm in the light. But my, I still feel just like I have every time I've been here. I don't think you have a right to tell me what I can do with my building. And most people downtown aren't changing their building. It's been this way for a good bit, maybe painting. Some of them have grants moving to it. Fun. But I, that actually, that's my home. I mean, I don't do a business. That's my home. That's where I live. And I don't, if you live somewhere and someone can mention something, you can't do this, you can't do that, how would you feel? That's the way I look at it. Because it's my home, as long as I'm there, I want to do what I want to do. And I don't feel like anyone has the right to tell me how to lose. And if I need to do anything, we had a city plan to go to, to and talk about it. I'm sure she'd do about what you want because no one's going to go clear off the line. But I still think <laughs> you don't have a right to tell me what to do with my building. And I've been there since 1976. And I have I've painted the front and a few things like that, but made nothing in oh, so Don't you like them? They look nice. Thank you. I thought they did, too. <laughs> and if you want to add some, you're welcome. Okay. To <laughs> Can you tell me what color they would be? Uh, let's stay with purple. But like I said, I really don't see why we need someone to tell us what to do with our buildings. We've paid the taxes, we've worked there, we've done it. And, you know, why should they tell us? We have to say we to do it. You know, I'm not, not going to say much more. I'll just say one thing. This downtown of Greensburg that we have known for years and years, if this is not passed, it is subject to change. The old Greensburg that you've known all your lives, you're saying no to it. I don't care about the looks of the downtown Greensburg. We don't care about keeping the historic look of downtown Greensburg. And that's what the council will decide tonight based on your opinions. And I understand, uh, Mr. Slammer, trying to prosper with his business. I understand that. And if that's what the council so desires, to say we've washed our hands of downtown Greensburg, let everybody do to it as they please, as the business owners change and people from out of town come in and want to renovate the stores, tear it down, put something up that's uh, one story high instead of three stories next to the other one, I guess that would be their right. 
that's what we decided tonight. We keep try to maintain the downtown Greensburg looking like it is for years and years to come. But we say, okay, it's open to our zoning laws. And like every other business in town. Yeah. 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 So we'll just be on equal footing. Most business outside of town. I mean, you make it sound like, Mayor, that we're going to just come no. down there and tear everything no. up. And if you don't pass this, the future of downtown Greensburg. No. I moved down there when there was nobody on my side of the square except Jeff Moore. It, one will, other it will eventually be gone. It will eventually be gone little by little. Well, That's what's, what's going to be decided tonight. When a building needs repair, let's just tear the front down, make it modern, uh, reduce the stories, what have you. And, you know, most of us going to be dead as old people, older people. And what do we really care? Do we want to leave something to our kids that we knew and appreciated? Or say, you know, uh, based on money, we're going to let it go. And that's really where it is. And I, I just want to say, Ms. I, I truthfully do. You're a businessman, and you want to prosper. The buildings outside the square, and two, three blocks away, businesses and on out to the edge of Greensburg, a lot of them are new, bu new buildings. You know, their grandfather's where they're at, they can do what they want in that area. I don't think by saying no, but that's saying that we don't care about downtown Greensburg. I, I think before we voted on this, a lot of us voted on do, redoing Broadway. I think a lot of us care about the downtown. I think that we're listening to the property owners and we're going by what the property owners say. So why is that why is that saying that we don't want downtown to prosper and we don't want downtown to look good? Where did I, where did I, where did I just hear that at Bill? Did I say that? I sure didn't. I want the people to prosper. No matter who they are on or surrounding the square or outside the city limits of Greensburg. I want everyone, we want everyone to prosper. The only thing I said was if there is no historic preservation, and that's up to you guys, and I will support that, whatever you guys decide. What I am saying, this is the beginning of the end of the old city of Greensburg as we have known it. And that's okay with me. I'll be gone, I'll be six foot under. I mean, I think in a way, too, it's also protecting the property owners from another, you know, a neighboring building doing, doing something. Maybe way out of the ordinary, you know. I mean, it's. I, I think it protects property value as well. So, uh, uh, yes, Jean. I am a building owner, and I would like to object as well. And the best way for businesses to prosper is less government interference. And another thing that hasn't been looked at is the structural integrity of the buildings. And so when you talk about it being gone, no, this, and you've all said, this has nothing to do with the interior of the buildings. So let's keep beautifying things, mandating things, not addressing the structural, and let's see how long it does last. So, Gene, we would be doing a situation like that. We are, like, we're on 200 blocks of Franklin, preserving that building. With the intention of speaking, but I think, uh, uh, you know, I am, my name is Hank Martin, and I am a business owner. I don't own a business in the downtown di district or in the area that is proposed for the historic district, but I do uh, use the downtown. I enjoy the atmosphere in the downtown. I'd like to remind you that you were elected for to represent all the people of Greensburg. We are here not there representing strictly the business owners. Um, I think the, the event that uh, a few years ago that happened that really uh, bothered me the most about and, and really uh, cemented my, my feelings that there should be something to protect the downtown was that uh, for several years there was a, uh, a stopwatch sign that stood out there, a historic stopwatch sign. I think Oreos, I think they had that outside the front of their building. I mean, it's probably there for 100 years. Uh, but because we do not have a historic preservation of uh, a district. We don't have any uh, protection. The uh, business owner was able to sell that or to actually to trade it for work that he had done on this business for a sign. It's gone. 
people enjoyed it, people remembered it, it's in paintings of, of the downtown area, but because there was nothing to protect that, it, it was gone. So, I mean, I don't know what's to prevent people from saying, oh, the business is going a little bit badly, I'm going to sell off the architectural uh, embellishments that uh, have been on my building for 100, 150 years, because I can, basically. And I think that uh, we could we could really do that. We could have a downtown that was stripped uh, of, of the things that make it a downtown. And I think that uh, you know the other the other people who enjoy the downtown, who are citizens of Greensburg and who you also represent, uh, you know, are diminished if they can't uh, if we if we just allow uh, if, if people uh, if we have this laissez faire. Yeah, if you want to take off the top of your building or if you want to take off the facade and sell it, uh, that's fine. You can do that. But, uh, you know, I, I think, and that was the event that really uh, cemented my belief that there should be some protection, because there, there's not. Anyone can sell off anything on their building, um, and uh, there's nothing to protect it, and when it's gone, it's gone. That, you know, that science never comes back. So, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I guess I'm not for this either. Would you mind you know, telling us who you are? <laughs> yeah, Joe Shields. Uh, Daryl, I believe you mentioned a while ago that we had 40 meetings that a lot of us didn't attend. And uh, I was one of them that didn't attend 40 meetings. And it was because there were 40 meetings. <laughs> So this, this does go on. Now, you, you mentioned that uh, you want to see the downtown prosper, and you, you want to see it survive. And remember back when, when I complained about parking? The city government didn't want to do anything about it, but they did increase their parking places by almost double up here at the old uh, uh, library behind there. Then you moved down here made sure you had a big parking spot over there and here. But here you are, and by the way, the police station had three parking spots. Now it has 42. But the downtown, you've taken away parking spots from. By the way, in the last few weeks, and we're, we're keeping the downtown old, so everything's being changed on Broadway, which is okay. I mean, I have nothing to say, but I don't have a business downtown right now. But the thing is, if you'll look out in front of my building right now, uh, not I don't have a business there, but the building is missing a lot of its black uh, marble, okay, in the last few days because of the construction. The black marble has come off of it. I don't know how they're going to replace it, but I'm, I'm sure you guys will take care of that. Right, Mayor? Oh, yeah, go over and look. And uh, uh, besides two great big pieces missing, there's one great big piece that is cracked right through, and that's thick marble, real thick, black, beautiful black marble. And it's, uh, I know Meniere's has what they think is black marble, but it's plastic. This is the real stuff on this building, and it's, it's uh, not looking too good. And, of course, we're losing a few spots, but I... Uh, I'm against it. I'm against it because we're trying to survive downtown. Now, I'm, I just live there, but I would kind of like to rent the building, and it means uh, more money than I made in the first 20 years of my business life income just from having that thing rented. It's not rented. In fact, you can't even get to it right now, you know, because you people are wanting to help us. Okay? So, yeah, I'm against it. And no, no 40 meetings. I'm sorry. So we're learning the value of the last year not doing improvements to the downtown. I go. That's what I've heard. Okay. Anyone else in the audience?
is where we make the big bucks. threshold to, to do them, but 
We have a number more here for the second and third quarters through the summer. Uh, we're going to have a QuickBooks workshop, um, general marketing workshop, um, uh, a business plan workshop, and a, and a how to launch your, uh, your business workshop, which is just sort of a, it's a feasibility workshop, essentially, should you move forward from this point. Um, just wanted to mention that uh, Cutting Edge Sporting Goods received uh, an Edge Award uh, from the State Small Business Development Center um, for, for their expansion um, that, that they did. And uh, we also have uh, you know, tried to work more closely with the, the other community organizations, uh, Main Street, um, obviously the Chamber of Commerce and Jeff, and, uh, and uh, work one. Right? So, uh, of these 41 clients that took counsel, you said there were only four that are starting a business. Are you still seeing the others, or what's happened? Have they gone by the wayside, or what's happened? Yeah, generally, um, we see about 10% of our clients do um, either improve their existing business or start a business on their own. Um, so part of what we do is, you know, we meet with an individual once, go over their their plans, their progress, their really feasibility. And some people just aren't prepared, aren't ready um, to start a business or it just doesn't make sense. Um, I meet with a number of clients who uh, maybe have questions on how can I find a grant or those things where, you know, the answer generally is not there. Um, so that's a lot of one the basically one and done clients where you spend maybe an hour or two with them. And as their needs evolve, I, I absolutely keep keep working with individuals as it goes. Um, you know, there's I, I know I'm still meeting with individuals that I first started meeting with last year, and one of those for sure will be a, a new business here in April. But for some of the larger projects, it takes a little bit longer, obviously, to, uh, to come to fruition. So. But 10% is going to be, you know, the general, especially for start, it's going to be right around that 10%. And that's true state life. We asked for some numbers, and I appreciate this. This is a better idea what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, I'm happy to come by. The quarterly is what makes most sense. Um, April here was, you know, we, we had a really, really great April. Um, but I can't tell you what May will be. <laughs> you know, it, it, I can tell you April, you know, next week, and then uh, I can come by in May and say, hey, it, it's fairly cyclical in the way things work. So, um, I mean, you can tell, you know, it, April by itself was ten times what the entire first quarter was. So, uh, you know, some of the some of the projects take a little bit more time to, to come to fruition. So, but like I said, I mean, I had to come quarterly, however, however often, to uh, tell you guys know what's going on. Uh, and for uh, clarification on the, on the second the second half of the year's funding, when uh, when would you like us to? Start that ball. We do that in January of every year. No, well, no, well, we, we gave them the money, right. and we we conditionally okay. go them for the second half. I think it was five thousand. We gave you twenty five hundred. Right. Yes. Right. Another twenty five hundred. He's wanting to know when he gets his capacity. No, I, I just no, want to know when. I just want to know when I can come and start. Well, yes. I, I, like yeah. that. Well, yeah. with, <laughs> with the paperwork situation, you know, I mean, I was, I was, I, I got it to you a day late, so you guys didn't get it. I don't want the same thing to happen. How much have you collected so far? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Right. With the with this, I it must have been my error on the email, but uh, I sent the long invoice as well. So, so what is I can get that over to you tomorrow morning. What's the council's budget? So we haven't given you any money. Correct. Uh, I thought we had twenty five hundred. You did, but we haven't received. You have received. Have you you don't give a bill. You're not. You have have as far as I know, our, our director did send it. No, I do not have okay. anything. Okay, again, I'm, again, the, uh, the, the, the billing process, that, that part of it, I'm If they don't give me an invoice, they're not getting one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, I will bring one over tomorrow. I'm not going to get one. We're going to try another day. Oh, Wednesday. 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 We'll make it happen. I know. Imagine how great it would be, you know, once, once it is. You said you'll have a, a 
mean, this is uh, so. How long would it take you to compile the second quarter numbers? So it'll be over in June or July meeting. Them, like, you know, like, uh, July. Yeah, yeah it, it would be August before we have the, the finalized numbers. So maybe we have to wait. Maybe we just uh, June. I mean, I can do what I did here. Just you kind of see the April number that I can give you yeah. sort of the pipeline. Yeah. Um, and just give you a general idea of how the quarter's been. Yeah, maybe in June, and then that way we can make an assessment. I think this is a step in the right direction. I concur with Bill. <coughs> Good stuff. Yeah. And again, all the job numbers there for the second half, or for the half, semi annuals. Anything else, Council? Thank you, Thank you, Eric. Eric, I like your format. Thank you. Definitely an improvement, right, Jamie? Yes. Next item on the agenda is Mr. Mark Kaufman, our new EDC director, with an update. Well, good evening, folks. Good evening. <laughs> I don't have anything tonight as interesting, maybe, or as captivating as the historic preservation ordinance. But I would like to give you a little bit of an update here. And, uh, this is my fifth Monday on the job with uh, EDC. And I noticed that it rains every Monday in, in Greensburg. Now, I did not bring that weather up from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I promise you that. And for the benefit of the farmers, I also promise it will not rain on every Monday forthcoming. Wouldn't it be great to have a job as a weather person where you could be right 60% of the time and, and get paid pretty well for that? But I'll, I'll drop that right now. Uh, what we're starting with the, the new Economic Development Corporation program is to update the, some of the materials that we have for aggressively marketing Greensburg and Decatur County. We're going to start that uh, step at a time. Uh, we're going to work with uh, the information packets and the folders that the information comes in because as I was studying and, and researching this job, I saw that the information the, the, that we have with the county and the city, the Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Corporation, Main Street, it's in pretty good shape. We just need to show people that we're working together, pulling together for the betterment of the community. And to, to, to do that, we, we can start with a folder that has the different logos of Main Street, Economic Development Corporation, Chamber of Commerce, City, County, and of course, Greensburg in the center of that with that, the great tree that you guys are all used to. And I, I, as an outsider, when I came in, I had to see if it looked like, as good as it did on the internet. It's great. So we're going <laughs> we're gonna to put that on our folders to start uh, our aggressive marketing. Uh, and we're doing that right now uh, with a company that's uh, helping us with that. Also, secondly, I want to start a very aggressive uh, business expansion and retention program here in Greensburg, uh, Decatur County. Uh, it, and it just makes good sense because your healthy existing ex existing businesses, they create across the country, 70 to 80 percent of all new jobs. It may be that your new recruitments make the sexy headlines, but, uh, and that's great. A new recruitment is great, but it, it's less time consuming. It takes uh, less money, usually, to work with a company that is expanding or that may be needing to leave. And as someone here in Greensburg told me, he said, uh, you know, it's like business. It's like when, we, when we're looking for a new customer, we don't want to be courting them at our, at our front door while the existing businesses or my existing cu customers are going out the back door. So that's why I want to start this, and, and we're working on it right now with, with the existing business services and our team. Uh, we're already uh, visiting companies. We're already talking to them about how what's good, what's good going on. Or what do they need help with? What basically do they need help with? Uh, we were already making, or we're in the process of making a couple of uh, loans from the revolving loan fund to help small business. And, and we're, we're hoping that that will 
eventually help them to expand and, and certainly to stay in Greensburg, Decatur County. Um, we're looking also at a business appreciation day in September, September the 13th, where we can show our existing businesses that we appreciate the jobs that they create here in Greensburg, the taxes that they pay, being the backbone of the community for helping, for helping to provide uh, the, the economic status that, that is here right now, and hopefully the, what we will do to help them grow their business. Uh, third in the recruitment area for new business. I'm working on developing close relationships with uh, Hoosier Energy, uh, with uh, Duke Energy, with the state, and uh, the South Central, a very aggressive organization I've come to find around here, South Central Economic Development Group. And this will help help us turn leads into new leads, newly recruited companies in, in this community. Finally, uh, just as a uh, little examples of some of the things that I'm doing, uh, working with the Chamber of Commerce here to try to establish a new leadership Greensburg program to where the, the leaders of the community can come together uh, once a month and, and see what good communities or what, what aggressive communities or progressive communities are doing uh, and, and how things work together, how, how all the, the utilities, the education, uh, the, the governmental work, they all work together to help a, the, to help a community progress and, and to help uh, a, a community uh, with its up-and-coming leaders in, in Greensburg. So I hope that as we go along that you'll invite me back uh, frequently so I can let you know what's going on and what great things are going on in, in the uh, area of economic development in Greensburg and Decatur County. Thank you. You're welcome every night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next time I'm doing business is uh, Raleigh O'Bateman. Uh, this, for five years, instead of three years, <clears throat> passed last month, Mr. Mike Malesko from Raleigh O. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, I've been invited uh, to appear tonight uh, to answer some questions for the council, which I'll be happy to do. Uh, the second thing I'd like to do is just uh, uh, after I do that is uh, possibly give you some information on where Valley is going and what we're doing. Sure, okay. absolutely. Okay. So, do we have any questions regarding the abatements? Okay, I can take this off for how the bill can. Um, last month we passed an abatement for Valio. Uh, we, we, we passed it three years, not five. And the reason the committee came up with three years instead of five, and I'm not, I'm open to amend it, if that's what the council wants to do, uh, which I'm part of the maintenance committee. But the reason I think that the council decided three years was tied maybe the equipment that is used, a lot of times it's good for design changes for a couple years before design's changed again, and you would ask for five years. And we have done that in the past without checking on the longevity of the piece of equipment that is being invaded. And if we knew that this equipment is going to be in service for five years, that's another option. With the amount in the past, and we don't hold anybody to this, no one in the recent past has uh, lived up to their part of the bargain on the amount of employees and because of the economic situation. That's taken for granted. If, and something else, we 
to give abatements is to produce good jobs, not temporary jobs. Salary, or not salary, but full-time people with benefits. You know, if all these things can be proved, I would be willing to reconsider. Okay. Uh, well, regarding the the, we I submitted three abatements to the council for approval. And the total of those abatements was eight million seven hundred sixty-eight thousand. That value will be investing in machinery and equipment uh, in the very near, near future. Uh, the the first program was the Nissan program. Okay, and the lifespan of that program is six years. Did did you get these handouts I had sent down? Uh, there was there was a request for addition. No. Yes, that one. Okay. If you if you look at that, you can see uh, <clears throat> the first program I'm talking about is Nissan, and the length of that that program is going to be six years. Okay. Uh, the second program is Chrysler, and the length of that program is five years, and the last program is Ford, and the length of that program is seven years. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the the investment. In the Nissan's 2.6 million, in Chrysler 3.9 million, and for 2.3 million. Uh, the additional employees uh, total 114 new jobs, uh, 53 new jobs for the Nissan program, uh, 46 new jobs for the Chrysler program, and 16 new jobs for the Ford program. Okay, so I, I think you can see that the the, the machinery equipment that is being purchased, okay, exceeds, uh, is equal to or exceeds the five years of the abatements that Valley was asking for. And the new jobs being created uh, total 114 new jobs. So I, I guess in answer to your question, Mayor, I know it's on the agenda. Uh, the ones from last month that was passed. She, uh, Jan's getting the SB ones. June has the originals. She can get the I've got copies. give abatements, it's, a, it's a, a bargain, you know, something that we agreed to, that one company has agreed to supply the jobs, and we agreed to give the abatements. And I know that if we didn't give the complete amount of abatements, we would hear from the companies. So what I'm recommending, and if Valley was sure that they can hold their part of the bargain, and supply these jobs in the amount of time that they have, that they have agreed to, I would support five years. All right, well, let me give you a little bit more information then, Mayor. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> basically, Valio, since 2005, okay, 
to this current year has invested $53 million in the plant, okay, with an additional 30 some million, uh, which will total through 2015 $89 million. That value will be investing in new machinery and equipment in the plant, okay. And this is on file with the state of Indiana, and we we'll apply for other tax incentives with them. Okay, the the employees uh, <clears throat> uh, going back to the year 2000, Valio had employed 1,052 employees. Uh, that was during the heyday when there was they were producing 17 million vehicles in North America. Okay, that's. Uh, that dropped a little bit, and then, of course, the last couple of years, things have been very tough economically in the uh, auto industry. But things are starting to turn around now, and recoveries are being made. Uh, Valio actually reported first quarter record profits uh, for 2011. All right. Uh, but the uh, in 2000, uh, the year 2000, as I said, the uh, was the high number of employees that we had was 1,052. 2010 was the low number, 427 employees. Currently, so uh, the yearly average since 2002, 2010 was 644 employees. And currently, we have 601 employees, okay? Uh, and that was as, as of February. Uh, one, one of the one of the issues is that 178 of those employees are temporary, okay? And the reason for that is because of the economic uncertainty that has existed for the last year and a half, okay? We are currently in the process of making a transition of those temporary employees to permanent, okay? It won't be all at one time, but it is happening, okay? Um, then the other item I'd like to bring up is the since 2005 the property taxes paid by Valio. Okay, uh, since then Valio has paid over three million dollars in, in property taxes, uh, while at the same time re receiving abate, uh, abatements uh, for some 20 plus abatements. Okay, which uh, uh, believe me are very instrumental. Okay, in the decision making that goes on on whether to invest more money in different different plants, okay, around the country. Uh, Valio's a very large company. They're global. Uh, they have 120 plants, 60,000 employees, and uh, uh, the market in North America is just growing. And uh, and that's why currently we, we are slated, uh, not counting the other numbers now, but through the year 2015, We'll be putting 39 million dollars into this plan. Okay, there, and that's why I come before the council. Uh, the the three-year abatement's good, but the five-year abatement is really uh, that 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 basically uh, equalizes the investment against the tax benefit. Okay, uh, a three-year abatement on on property, machinery, equipment that is going to be uh, on the books for six years. Uh, puts us at a disadvantage, okay, as far as a benefit cost ratio. So uh, I would ask the council to reconsider uh, so that they match up the abatement with the uh, with the life of the equipment. Uh, I think if you look at our abatements in the past, which we, we report uh, annually on, uh, we pretty much held up to our words on what we're going to do. Of these 72 that are temps now, how many of them are going to be Permanent of the 114. Are these 114 additional to 72 tents? The, the 114 are additional. And in addition, the 72 are going to be made permanent also, full time. That was 172. Okay, and they're going to be made in addition? In, in, in steps. We're currently, uh, I think the number is 50 some that we are currently in the process of uh, moving to permanent employees. So it'll be a step-by-step -step process. They, all 178 won't go to permanent uh, in the next month or so. You know, Mr. that's why I really appreciate Valley being part of our uh, community, community good corporate neighbor, I really do. 
and the city, I believe, has done most everything we can do. You know, we've updated equipment that came back from Mexico, everything we do, could do to help you. Not only do we jobs, if not increase, but try to retain as much as possible. There have been difficult times, I understand that. And so what I'm hearing you say is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that these temporaries are going to be turned into full-time employees. Yes. Plus, you're going to add the 114. Yes. The 114 are associated with the... No, not all once. That's over... What? Yeah, these are three different projects, and they'll be phased in through over through the I think it's December 2012. Completion date here is one eleven one two thousand eleven, January 2013. Uh, this this one here is 2011-6. Uh, starting date is seven one two thousand eleven. Completion date 11 1 2011. When will those employees be put in place? Uh, right at the, the, those dates that you're looking at there, Mayor, are the dates for to put the machinery and equipment and the lines in place. So it would be shortly after a okay. month or so. And but, but you can look and for, uh, <clears throat> again, I, I have the uh, start of production date on that handout that I made. Okay. That I supplied to the council, and the start of production date would be the date where the employees would start work. Uh, if not, maybe a month before then. There's necessary training and things like that that have to be done. But for most of them, will be starting January. Uh, yeah. Most of them start at the beginning of next year. Yes. Yes. And equipment will will be in use for five plus years. Uh, uh, I believe it's an average of six years, yes, uh, minimum five years. So uh, what I'd like to ask the question, and I don't mean to put you in rock and hard place, but uh, when the renewal comes in the first full year, and your manpower count will be up where you're telling us tonight that it will be. Uh, I can't guarantee that, but I think if you look at all, you know, we've had the history of abatements with you, and we report on them every year, and I think we pretty much uh, have met our targets. And, and, and yes, we work well with the city of Greensburg. We appreciate everything they've done as far as tax incentives and abatements, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I, I think Valley, on the other hand, has made a decision to invest a lot of money in this community. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you, there's 22 abatements right now, and I trust that you, as representative of Valio, will continue to support the city of Greensburg, because we want to support Valio. And Valio wants to be here. It's a great workforce. your question. Uh, Valio has never had anything less than a five-year abatement granted by the city of Greensburg, and I spoke to the uh, Indiana uh, EOC director, and there haven't been any three-year abatements granted anywhere that he's aware of. They're all five-year. In Indiana? In, in, in Indiana. We have. We have. We have. Well, I, I, I'm just going by what Trevor Lane had indicated to me. And I think that was I mean, maybe he's talking about bigger companies. And I think sure. our concern was on the type of equipment that it, because, you know, I used to work on move industry as well. You know, most times, every two years at least, we have design change and the type of equipment you're using to change it. Maybe not the line, but the particular equipment to manufacture that component or that part. Yeah, there's there's always changing changes to dyes. But the and lines don't change. The lines no, the lines don't change, and 
uh, in, in like this in this case it's new business so these are new lines coming in I would be in favor to amend it I mean the economy seems that you have no statistics that the economy is improving therefore with new business hopefully Valley will be able to do what they have to do on the SP let, let me give you one more statistic or several more. Uh, these 114 jobs over the next five years will put $32 million into this community. Okay. Uh, the even with the abatement, it'll be an additional five hundred and eighteen thousand dollars in property taxes. And the difference between the five year abatement uh, uh, and the three-year abatement is only $62,000, okay, that the city of Greensburg will be granting a tax abatement to Valio. When you look at the numbers, uh, $39 million that we're investing in machinery and equipment, you look at the, pay, at the payroll, that's $32 million over the next <coughs> five years just for those additional jobs. Uh, I, 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 you know, to me, it, it's a small price. But it's, it's still a huge incentive, okay, to value to continue to invest in the community. <coughs> I think this is information that we didn't have as a committee, and I think just the tax abatement alone is going to be and then we can bring it back to the council at the next meeting. And I really think in the future, uh, Mr. Molesco will be able to be very helpful to someone from value would attend the tax abatement committee meeting to explain uh, any questions we may have. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do that, Your Honor. That, that way it won't uh, take up your time again or, or ours as well for a second time. Okay. And, and if there's any additional information that the committee needs, uh, I'd be more than glad to supply that to them. Okay. It's okay? Yeah. We'll, we'll meet and discuss it again. Do you, would you like Mr. Molesco to attend? Whatever you wish. Uh, I, I don't know. Be no problem. I'd be more than happy to attend.